This is Dr. J. Welcome to Thesis in 101, where hygiene is not as important as you once thought it was. In the series, we cover tips and tricks to help you on your research journey. Today's focus is on the research topic and title. Let's get right into it. Simply put, a topic is an area you wish to investigate. When thinking of a topic, there are three simple rules. Number one, the topic of the study must represent an academic and or practical problem area that warrants further academic research. Investigating why some women like to wear high heels and others don't might be interesting, but if you cannot justify a case for why that topic is important, then perhaps you shouldn't go into it. Number two. The topic of the study must be justified within the parameters of your discipline and your academic department. In other words, it shouldn't interfere with other domains. For instance, if you are in the commerce field, you know, businessy stuff, why would your topic be about marine biology? Last, but certainly not least, number three, there must be a gap in literature. Many first-time researchers struggle with especially number three. For this reason, here are a few tips to help you narrow your search for a topic and to find a seemingly elusive gap in literature. Just so you know, this process can take several weeks, if not months. Things to keep in mind when finding your topic. Find an area related to your field that you are passionate about. Research sucks. The road is long. You get bored, frustrated, despondent, overwhelmed, lonely, depressed. There is a lot of crying involved. So at the very least, find a topic that you will be excited about in a year or three or eight. Also, if you can, find a topic that you already have some interaction with. Researching an area you know absolutely nothing about is going to make your research journey that much harder. Number two, Google the living daylights out of your area of interest. Read the articles that you downloaded thoroughly. A guide that I got is to try and get through five papers a day. The aim is for you to become familiar with the area. Once you are familiar with your area of interest, you can move to step three. Step three, actively read the future references section in the papers that you have downloaded. The reason I say first read a few papers and then check out what research must still be done is that only once you are familiar with a topic will the future research section make sense to you. Also, if you have read especially the latest developments in your field, you will be in a better position to evaluate if the gap listed in the paper is still a gap. While these steps may be presented to you in a linear form, you are most likely going to jump from one to the other and repeat steps as you see fit. Remember when I said it would make your research journey easier if you know something about the area you want to explore? Well, finding a gap could also be identified by your expertise. If you see an angle that is missing from the papers, write it down and check online if similar papers come up. A third option is to take a topic that already exists, but change the context to make a new topic. For instance, there are many papers written on the impact of technology on the different generations, such as Gen Xers versus Gen Zs versus the smashed avocado generation. But you will find that most of these studies were done in Europe and the Americas. So you can say, well, I know this type of study already exists. However, based on the differences in technological landscape between Europe, the Americas and Africa, I will be doing my study on the kids in Africa. Therefore, you will bring a new angle to a topic which makes it a new study. Another option is to ask your supervisor. If this is their area of expertise, they will know where things are missing. Now, considering that the point of your degree is to learn how to do research, including finding gaps in literature, the way your supervisor may help you with this particular issue is mainly dependent on the level you are. For instance, if you are an honor student and only have one year to complete a research project, it may be the policy of the department to just give you the gap since you don't have two or three months to find one and the level of research skills you have to demonstrate is not as intense as a master's or PhD student. So let's say you found something. There are things you need to do to qualify if it is actually a gap. So here are things to look out for when searching for a gap in literature. One. Check the publishing date of the paper you think you found a gap in. If the paper was written eight years ago like this one, 
The gap listed in the future research section may no longer be there. Even if the date is recent, check if another researcher did not already publish a paper addressing the gap. When you find that gap, customize the future research suggestion to a manageable and appropriate scope. What do I mean by this? Your scope is how big your research project is going to be. This is usually determined by how long you have to complete your project and how thick your dissertation or thesis is allowed to be. Here's an example. You found a gap that says future researchers should focus on the impact of fairy tales on women. The number and magnitude of angles you will cover in your thesis or dissertation will be significantly different depending on the degree you want to pursue. For instance, in my department, honor students are required to write a 5,000 word paper, while a master's student has to write 25,000 word dissertation and a PhD student has to write an 80,000 word thesis. Clearly, this indicates that there are different levels of depth you can go into based on what you are trying to achieve. So in this case, where we are looking at the impact of fairy tales on women, at a PhD level, you may look into gender roles, maintaining a patriarchal society, influences on society at large, and influences on movies. For your masters, your scope cannot be that elaborate because you have limited time and there is no way you can fit all of that into 25,000 words. So you could opt to say, I'm only going to be focusing on gender roles and gender-based inequality. For your honors student, you basically have just enough time and paper length for one of these angles, so you could choose, perhaps, gender roles. In summary, you are going to get bored, so find something that you are interested in. Do your homework, find that gap in literature. And don't be a hero. Do only what you can. This is all from me today. Please check out part two of this lesson, which is focusing on your title. If you have a question, please add it to the comment section. Also, please add your tips and tricks regarding this topic. That's all from me, signing off.